coba.
That was our Mestia to Ushguli trek here in Upper Swaneti in the eastern part. It's a four day trek that goes from Mestia to Ushguli and you can stay in guest houses along the way so it makes it a really accessible trek for people looking to get out on the hiking trails but not looking for something too challenging. We are going to cover some bits and bobs about the trek in this video but we do have an entire blog post which is dedicated to pretty much everything you need to know about doing this trek so we've popped a link to it in the description down below check that out if you are planning to do this trek yourself and you want to know all the ins and outs we'll tell you a bit more about uh, the sort of day-to-day -day details now of the actual trek so the whole trek is four days and it's about 50 kilometers of walking day one you start in Mestia which is the biggest town in the region and uh, you know it's got shops it's got restaurants it's got all of that jazz so you can get to Mestia have a day or two to explore and then set off on the hiking trail it's not too tough a day uh, it's quite a good introduction to kind of get you into the rhythm of walking uh, you hike up to a kind of glass, uh, glassy, grassy uh, clearing where you've mm. got fantastic views over the valley where you're heading. Mm. Um, it's quite a nice forest section yeah. in the morning as you're climbing up as well. As Kim says, you've got those views over the, the valley and views of Tetnildi, Mount Tetnildi mm -hmm. as well in the distance. And then from there, you have a choice of descending on the Jeep track or like we did, stay a bit higher. Um, along one of the narrow trails and come down at the village of Lahiri uh, which was a really really nice village it's got a ton of old towers and pretty good condition uh, so it's well worth dropping in by that village and then coming down from there yeah and then uh, Trabiani village we really really enjoyed actually you can carry on a little bit further uh, to Zabeshi but uh, we stayed at a place called Miser guest house definitely recommend that place it was uh, recommended to us by our guest house in Mestia mm -hmm. which we also loved um, and so yeah we were really happy that they recommended that place Miser is very passionate about you know Swaneti uh, about Swanetian culture and history and he's happy to share it with you you can tell he takes great pride in it also great food and you you can go up uh, his brother's 900 year old tower which mm. is pretty cool as that well. That was a good experience yeah. and he also showed us a little bit of the museum as yeah. well which was essentially the um, where people used to live and yeah. that, was, that was really At cool. At the foot of the tower mm. so yeah it's a really nice village and probably a bit nicer than Zabeshi it's certainly got many more towers and looked a little bit more lived in. But we didn't actually go to Zabeshi, so... Just saw it from above, but that would be my opinion. <laughs> uh, day three is um, the shortest day in terms of distance, but it's actually the biggest day in terms of how high you're climbing. So, um, Particularly if you're taking the high route. Yeah, so depending on whether you're taking the low route or the high route to Adishi, you've got up to an 1100 metre climb that day, and it kind of starts as soon as you walk out the door of your guest house. You're just climbing, climbing, climbing. I don't know about you, but for me, I need to kind of get into my rhythm in the morning, you know, have a little warm up before I just start going straight uphill. So I found that a bit tough. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you climb up uh, towards the Technology Ski uh, Resort. Mm -hmm. It's mostly through forest yeah. for a good 600 metres or so with some views. I mean, it was quite nice when we went through, the leaves were changing colour. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then when you get to the, the road that goes up to the ski resort. It's a bit of a slog. It's a bit of a slog. <laughs> so if you're taking the high route, you've got to continue up that road for a, a about, two to 300 metres. About three kilometres. And it's uh -huh. yeah over 300 metre climb still on this road, which if it's sunny and hot, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a slog and kind of zaps your energy. There is the option of going down the hill a little bit to take the cable car up. Mm -hmm. um, that wasn't running when we were there. Otherwise, I totally would have been on that cable car because that way you just skip out the worst part of the day um, and save a bit of energy. But anyway, we chose the high route to Adishi, which, uh, yeah, definitely recommend. Fantastic scenery. It is over a little bit too quickly for my liking. Uh, it's about 45 minutes on that scenic trail before you start descending. Um, and Sorry, we've got a dog, <laughs> got a dog at our feet. <laughs> Doggo is wanting a pat, here we go. And um, yeah, it's a bit of a steep descent and there's not really much of a trail to follow, but uh, as long as you've got uh, the map on uh, your phone and you can follow on GPS, then it's all good. Are you trying to get in the video? Doggo <laughs> wants a starring Success. role in this, here we go. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Adishi itself is the most remote village uh, on the trek. It's kind of nestled in a valley that is completely by itself. It's not on the main road between Mestia and Ushguli. So it does feel quite different to, to anywhere else. Yeah, it's reachable by a dirt road. 
Um, but it definitely does feel the most remote on yeah. this trek. It's not super remote, but it does feel different. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, and from Adishi, it is pretty much all trail uh, on day three, mm. and it's certainly the most spectacular day. You get up close to Adishi Glacier, you have that river crossing in the morning, which can strike fear into a lot of people, but um, don't worry, don't panic. Basically, later in the season, uh, September, October, like when we've been trekking, the river levels are a lot lower than earlier in the season. So for us, it was still a little bit nerve-wracking crossing and uh, you do definitely need to take care. Hiking poles are a good idea for stability, but the, the water was only coming up to, you know, maybe mid-calf, below our knees, certainly. It is absolutely freezing. It's it's essentially just melted glacier water from, uh, you know, the, the glacier right there. Earlier in the season, the river is like a totally different beast. It's a lot higher, it's a lot faster flowing. Wider and A lot well. wider, yeah. Um, I would not recommend crossing it on foot it, it, earlier in the season. But fortunately, there are some guys that always hang around there with horses and will basically take you across, take your bag across as well for 20 lari, which is pretty expensive for what you're getting. But at the end of the day, it's the safest way to cross, it's the easiest way to cross, and it takes a lot of stress out of your day. So just go for that. After you cross the river, you've got uh, about a 450 meter climb up to a pass. Again, in September time, when we were there, beautiful colors on the mountainside, all the leaves were changing into yellows and reds, and it was really, really gorgeous and the views are unbelievable it's it, it's one of the best views that we've had hiking in Soneti so really love that day mm -hmm. once you get to the top of the pass you can take a little side hike up along a ridge and you get even better views so we definitely recommend doing that as well when we got up there there were some really nasty thunderstorm clouds kind of in the distance but it actually looked amazing so we saw it at the bottom in bright sunshine mm -hmm. the weather was turning 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 by the time we got to the top it was very very moody so it was pretty cool from there you descend down to uh, another valley, it wasn't too bad a descent, and you walk basically on a, a pretty old road to the village of Kaldi, which has uh, traditionally has only had one guest house there. There was actually another one that was nearly uh, completed that we saw. Uh, but for us, they were not open. We were desperate to stop there. It was about 6 p.m. It was getting dark. We'd had a long day. We were tired, uh, but they were completely closed and we had to carry on to the village of Iprali where there's a few more guest houses. And that's um, another two and a half to three kilometers down the road. So we got in there at about 7 p.m. as it was getting dark, very tired. It probably wouldn't take you 11 hours like it did us. No. Uh, but yeah, it was the longest day certainly and a pretty tiring one. Day four, we uh, just continued on to Ushguli. Now, there is a road that takes you from Iprali to Ushguli. You do not want to walk on that road. It would be completely soul destroying. Uh, there was not much traffic going by when, when we've been trekking, but normally there'd be loads of cars going by, jeeps, kicking up dust, not pleasant. So definitely take the alternative route, which goes up the hillside through some forests and you spend very little time on the road right at the end. Um, and yeah, we really enjoyed that. That last day, day four, it was quite pleasant um, through the forest sections. The trail was a little bit overgrown when we were out of the forest, but it was a nice enough trail. You got views now and again. And uh, when we got down back down to the road um, and entered Ushguli, we crossed the river and came up the side uh, rather than stayed on the road. Yeah. Which is a good way of doing yeah. it. Ishguli itself is uh, a pretty cool place to end your trek. It's quite different to the other the other villages. It's bigger, it's got quite a good atmosphere about it. It's kind of split into three parts, almost like a lower, middle and upper part. Um, so we walked all the way through and came up to the upper part and we are now staying at Angelina's guest house, which we're loving. Uh, the host, uh, the mum, Sharena, is really, really friendly. She has fed us the best food that we've had on the whole of this trek. And we can view, what's it called? Shkar? Shkar? I can't say this Shikara. name. Shikara. Shikara. It's not even that hard. She sounds like Shakira. I'll try and there remember it like go. that. That's Shikara. how you remember it. It's, uh, we have views of Shikara Mountain and Glacier from outside our bedroom window, from the shower, from here Shikara in the garden. is the highest yeah. peak in Georgia. Yeah, so uh, we're really enjoying it here and we definitely recommend it if you are coming to Ishguli and going to spend a couple of nights. So we're basically here for three nights, uh, maybe more, who knows. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to head off on another trek up uh, Latpari, is that what you say? Latpari Pass? To Latpari Pass, yes. yeah. And down to Twelpi, um, which will connect us to Lower Swaneti. But you will have to wait till our next video. 
uh, to find out more about that one. Overall impressions about the trek? Uh, overall impressions, it's a really great trek if you're looking for something that is easily accessible because you can trek from guest house to guest house. You don't have to carry camping gear, you don't have to worry about food, anything like that. Um, it's not too tough. Uh, for us, I'd say, uh, apart from day three, which we absolutely loved and was really, really spectacular, um, we, didn't, we didn't really enjoy this trek as much as the other trek that we did in the western part of Swaneti from Nakra to Mestia. Um, so if you are looking for something a little bit more challenging, uh, less people, no doubt, I mean, there was nobody on the trail when we were doing it, but usually it would be a lot busier on this one, then we definitely recommend looking into the Nakra to Mestia trek either as an alternative or in addition to this one. Um, you can check out the video uh, for that one up here and uh, I'll pop the guide for that trek down below as well uh, if you want to read up on both and see which one would suit you better. Yeah. You can also just do part of that previous trek mm -hmm. and the two of them are essentially one long trek because yeah. What we did was trek all the way from Nakra to Ushkuli, so yeah. you can tailor it however you like. Yeah, it's all part of the Transcaucasian Trail, mm -hmm. and most of it is you know, marked and everything like that. In order to get to Mestia, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you're coming from Tbilisi, the capital, there's a train that takes about five and a half hours to get to Zugdiri, and then from there you can take a uh, Marshutka. There are several a day uh, that get you to Mestia. It's about three or four hours on the Marshutka to get there. And the road is actually quite good. Your experience might depend on the driver <laughs> and how fast he likes to go. Yeah. So guest houses along the way generally cost about uh, 50 or 60 lari per person per night. And that covers your dinner, your bed and your breakfast. And uh, that works out at about 16 to 19 dollars a day. So it's not too expensive to trek here. And there's no other cost involved in terms of national park fees or anything like that. So it's pretty good. And you usually get a pretty good feed. Um, that will set you up for the day. You know, we'd be carrying snacks on the trail that we've barely tucked into. That's been the story <laughs> often uh, of our treks in Georgia whenever we've stayed in guest houses. So uh, it's pretty good that way. It's good value. Del's been raging that he's been carrying <laughs> six heavy churchella around and not even eating them because we've just been quite full from the guest house. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. No need of snacks. In terms of gear that we had for this trek, you don't need to carry too much with you. Uh, you don't need camping gear unless you actively want to camp instead of staying in guest houses. We stocked up in a few snacks in Mestia. There's a Spar, a Nakora supermarket, etc. there. So you can definitely get um, some bits and bobs just for uh, snacks while you're on the trail. I would recommend hiking poles, like I said before. I'd say you definitely need proper footwear for this. You can't be doing it in, you know, just a pair of plimsolls. Is that even a word that people use these days? You. <laughs> um, Sandals. Yeah, anything like that. You want to have cheap trainers. <laughs> you definitely want to have some proper footwear. And uh, obviously, you'll just need whatever for staying over in the guest ICs, a change of clothes, some toiletries, and so on. We've got packing lists for this uh, in the blog post, so you can check that out to make sure you've got everything that you need. To shoot this video, we used our Sony A7 III with the 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. A uh, couple of shots on a couple of other lenses too, and of course we used our Mavic Air drone as well to get the drone shots. We used the Rode Video Mic Pro to get the majority of our sound. Why the majority? Was that because it was raining for a little bit and you had to use? Oh the yeah, it was. It was raining. <laughs> it was raining at the end of day three, so I had to put the mic away and use the in-camera audio for a few clips. So that was that. There you go. Anyway, we've got a full list of all of our like actual. Uh, photography gear and video gear that we use uh, down below and uh, a blog post with everything and all the info about that stuff so if you're interested in, uh, in that check it out. Mm -hmm. If you want to see the kind of on the fly behind the scenes version of how this trek went down do head over to our Instagram feeds we've got all of our stories saved uh, in the highlights reels and you can watch everything uh, as it went down the the kind of less polished version of it. Uh, you can listen to Kim Wolf rambling on, on even more. Slanging him off, <laughs> rambling on, moaning about this, that and the next thing. Uh, it's more fun than I've made that sound there actually. Uh, yeah, so you can check it's that quite out. Uh, as for now, thank you for watching mm -hmm. all the way to the end of this. Any questions, uh, just drop us a comment below. Uh, let us know what you think of the video. Uh, as usual, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you get notified whenever we release a new video. If we've missed anything, <laughs> which we probably have, we've, off, we've waffled on too much, everything's there in, uh, I was going to say in black and white, but you can't really say that with the internet, can you? 
It's all there in the blog post. Check get out. to the end, pal. Check get it. to the end. Right. Cheerio. See you cheer later. Up. See you later. Bye. <laughs>